Lightweight, long range, and easy on the eye. Who would have thought that e-mountain bikes would have come quite so far in less than a decade? The new Levo SL is a hugely significant bike. Yes, it comes with some tasty heritage in the Levo and the Canevo, but more than this, it throws down some mighty milestones in terms of motor, battery, and geometry. The biggest question arising from this bike is what type of specialized rider are you? Light and nimble? Are powerful and planted. The Specialized have invited us out here to South Africa to ride the new Levo SL. I'm looking forward to some quality time on it back home too. Well, I say quality time, it makes it sound like I'm dating or courting. But then if you think about it, Specialized e-bikes have been significant, not just to riders worldwide, but to the brand themselves. If you think about the last Levo launch in 2018, Mike Sinyard, the founder of Specialized said, it's one of their most important bikes. E-bikes have come a long way. First up then, let's have a look how this bike compares to the Levo. Well, the Levo SL, 17.35 kilograms, twice your power and 240 watts. The Levo on the other hand, 21.32 kilograms, four times your power and 565 watts. So, new motor, new battery, and new mindset. Remember, this bike needs to go as far as the Levo. Same time, same distance, four to five hours. So when you look at the range, the actual riding range of the Levo SL, you have to disconnect yourself a little bit from the ratings on the battery. Because on the Levo, with the over 700 watt hour battery, uh, we've educated the market what range meant. On the SL, we're talking about 320 watt hours. So does that mean the range is less than half? And the answer is no, because uh, mini battery, mini motor, in actual riding time and hours, the range is identical to the Levo. So if you and I, we would just go fully charged bikes, you on the Levo, I'm on the Levo SL, and we would ride them until they're empty, we would be back at this place at the exact same time. So range then, hugely important on this bike, as to are all the component parts, but it really is key to get into the soul of this bike, the philosophy behind it. How does it ride? What does it feel like? How does it compare to the Levo? What are its capabilities? Now, Specialized actually did a huge amount of research before making this bike, and they found that people were actually prepared to forego the power of turbo for a lighter, more nimble bike. In, uh, in the focus groups that we've done, um, trying to understand what people want out of mountain bikes, not everybody, but we have a significant amount of people come and say, hey, can you build me a battery that's 350 or 400 watts? And you ask them why, and they're like, well, hey, I don't ride in turbo. I never drain my battery and I hate lifting my heavy e-bike onto my car rack. That kind of fills that gap. It, it wasn't what we were after originally. We were looking for the, the nimbleness and the, the playfulness of a normal bike. At the same time, that it kind of fills both needs. Levo SL then very much takes its cues and its mindset from the stump jumper, similar geometry, sizing, and suspension design. Now, what's really interesting is that when Specialized started off their Turbo Levo project about a decade ago, they wanted their motors to emulate the pace of elite level athletes. Now, I weigh about 90 kilos, and I've just done this climb, half an hour climb, and there were some pro cross-country racers in front of me, and they look, look like they're about 60 kilos. And in turbo mode, I was actually able to keep up with them just about. So it seems like they might have achieved what they set out to do 10 years ago before they got sidetracked with the Levo. I think what's really cool is that you can actually mix a ride now with different levels of fitness rider. 
Obviously, I'd have beaten them down the downhill anyway. Time then to look at some of the detail of this all new bike. First of all, the motor. Now this is all new. It's specialized own. 1.1 kilograms lighter than the Levo motor, but more importantly, slightly more efficient. And just look how compact it is. There's a broad cadence spectrum on the Levo SL. There's no drop or increase in power. And if your cadence is about 90, then you're running about 80% efficiency. So a very important part for us that in a cadence range of say 50 all the way to 120, 130, we are delivering and we're delivering on a very high efficient rate and actually a very, very predictable curve. So the motor doesn't pike somewhere or like where you have to pedal at cadence 70 or you have to pedal at cadence 100. Like anywhere where you typically ride is we're delivering a very natural feel and a very efficient motor that just ends up giving you a lot of range. Now I'm just thinking about the motor on this bike at 1.9 kilograms, arguably one of the lightest on the market. And with 35 newton meters of torque, a third of the power of the Levo. Specialized really have thrown the cat amongst the pigeons with this bike and probably changed the whole landscape of e-mountain biking. And don't expect to go seeing this motor on any other e-bike because Specialized have sole exclusivity on it for five years. The battery, 320 watt hours plus range extenders, which are 160 watt hours. But it's important to recognize here that just because the batteries have less than the Levo, that doesn't mean you can't go as far. Now the frame is in many respects very close to the Levo. However, it's made a little bit more agile by the shortening of the chainstay. The Levo is 455 millimeters in the chainstay. The Levo SL, 437. So out in the trail, that means you can dive into those corners a little bit quicker. So here is the range extender in the water bottle there, and it's very easy. You've got a plug there, which unplugs, and this range extender, as I said, 160 watt hours, and it weighs about a kilo. Now I should mention actually that the range extender only comes as a package on the S-Works and the Founder editions of this bike. Now the Founder edition, limited edition bike, 250 made worldwide, and that comes with two of them. Um, I just want to touch on the sizing. Now, there's actually an extra, extra small uh, size of this bike, which brings in the whole possibility of your children riding an e-mountain bike. It comes with 29-inch wheels as well. Now, specialized guys say they've taken kids who are four foot 10 inches tall out for rides, 70 pounds, and they can get an insane amount of range out of the bike. So it brings the whole dynamic of mother, father, son, and daughter into the e-bike experience. It's great. So how does the Levo SL ride? Well, it's generally accepted that short chain stays do allow you to get around tight corners that little bit quicker. That's as long as all the other geometry numbers on your bike are up to scratch, such as the bomb bracket tight and the head angle. Now, especially say the suspension design on this bike actually adds to the lively ride as well. What's the bike about? Well, 150 mil travel, it can do pretty much everything, including ridiculous rock sections like this. Specialized do say that it probably leans more towards gradual fire roads than super tech rock uphill. Uh, which brings me on to the Levo. Why have we got the Levo in the shot? Well, I've got a bit of a technical rock section here, a bit of a trial section. I just want to put both bikes head to head to see how they both perform. <laughs> oh, boy. Obviously not everybody's cup of tea, but I think it proved that both bikes can actually do it. Maybe the Levo has the edge when it comes to sections like that. Now let's go back to the chainstay for a minute. Now uh, it's been regarded in the past that longer chainstays do allow you to get up steeper hills a little bit easier. And that's because you can have more weight over the front of the bike. However, because this bike isn't designed to do those ridiculous hills, even though it can do them, the overall geometry on the bike isn't compromised.
Well, the Levo SL was certainly quite capable up in the rocks there out in Junkers Hook, Stellenbosch. It's got me asking the question, who's this bike for? Well, obviously the weight, the range, and the looks will tick a lot of boxes for a lot of people. Is it for fitter riders? I don't think it is. I think it's for someone who wants a different experience. Maybe this bike then is a bike that bridges the gap. Maybe it's a gateway bike into e-mountain biking. I think there's gonna be two types of riders. There's the riders who um, love the, the super powerful, the planted feel of a, of a full power Levo. Uh, and those, those riders, they, they could probably appreciate what a Levo SL is, but at the end of the day, you can, on a full power e-bike, you can climb up steeper stuff and, and do things with the power differently than what you can with a Levo SL. But if you're the type of rider who really likes that lightweight feel, yeah. the body English of the ride, throwing the bike around, that kind of thing, the, the SL is what you're after. Now, no talk of e-bikes would be complete without a chat about apps. And I genuinely believe that this is where e-bikes have the upper hand of a non-e-bike, simply in the data that you have at your disposal, such things as rider output, system output. Now, in the latest version of the Mission Control app from Specialize, there's two cool new features. One is elevation, and the other one is heart rate. We do have now a heart rate monitor built in with our, with our emission control app, which you basically, within the app, you give in your, your desired heart rate, and the engine, the motor, adjusts the motor power according you to keep you at your heart rate level. So you basically tell it, I want to be at 130 at all time, and then the motor gives you more or less power, depending if you're above or below your heart rate, which makes it the ultimate, basically, fitness machine. water finally. So, how does the old SL stand up to a bit of moisture? Well, incredibly well actually. It's rated to IP67, 68, uh, and also it's got a Gore-Tex membrane in there. Now what this does is, if a motor heats up and then you take it home and it, it cools down, it contracts, it actually sucks a bit of moisture in, so that Gore-Tex membrane protects it from that. Plus, it's got marine grade seals. Right, let's talk about weight for just a minute. Now, we all know that for decades, money has bought you weight savings on mountain bikes, and that which in turn has saved you, well, I don't actually know what exactly, but it certainly gives you status. Now, the big thing about the Levo SL, it's as different in weight to the Levo as the Levo is to other e-bikes on the market. 17 kilos versus 21 on the Levo, and then lots of 150, 160 e-bikes are around about 24 kilos. So where does this leave us? Well, for many years, e-bikes have been about a cat or a bricks worth weight in difference, which is about five kilos, to a non-e-bike. Now, if you think about it, this bike, and it's rumored that some of them come in at about 16 and a half kilos. When you compare that to say, the 13 to 14 kilos of a non-assist stump jumper bike, then I think, the whole idea of this bike will definitely resonate among those people who are thinking about making the switch to e-biking. The decision what bike to get can be quite difficult if you don't try them. So I, I would really recommend you to go to a retailer and, and have a little test ride on all three to understand what's the most important to you. Is it more important to have like the pureness of a stump jumper? No power added, no charging needed, but you will not get as much trails and rides in as you could on an e-bike. Is it important to you to have the full power, 90 newton meters, 560 watts of, of power on the, on the Turbo Levo, and you can do all these crazy climbs and, and that plant that powerful, rather heavy weight feel doesn't matter to you, then you have the Levo. But if it's important to you to have that snappy, nimble, playful and light trail bike feel, and I would really recommend trying a Turbo Levo SL. Now we've been talking a lot about weight, but it's important to remember how much you, the rider, contributes to the overall system. For example, I weigh 90 kilograms. I can probably do about 5,000 feet of climbing on a 700 watt hour battery on a Levo. However, someone who's 50 kilos can probably do about 10,000 feet of climbing on the equivalent battery. And that's gonna have an impact also on the Levo SL as well, not only in the range, but also in what you can actually do on the bike. I think there are some factors you have to account for it too. If you're like a, a guy who is like rather tall and maybe a little bit heavy, and you are not 
that much in a good fitness level shape, then I, I would probably recommend the Turbo Levo as well. But if you have like legs and if you like to, to do sport and physically exercise your body, Levo SL all the way again, right? So returning for a minute then to what Specialized said about the Levo SL filling a hole in the market, will this Levo democratize e-bikes or has that already happened? Will this bike make e-bikes more understandable or has that already happened too? Will people now be thinking, well, we're only talking two or three water bottles in weight difference from a non-e-bike and a whole new world of possibility? So is the comparison then more about the Levo SL and the Stump Jumper than the Levo SL versus the Levo? Yeah, Levo, Levo SL is a, is a big, big milestone in, in the history of, uh, of uh, e-mountain bikes. It's a big, big game changer that uh, is just opening an all new category. So the Levo has a new stable mate and e-mountain biking has a new discipline. One thing's for sure, it's an incredibly exciting time to be involved with mountain bikes. But nevertheless, some big questions here for people looking to buy a new mountain bike. Would you go for a Kineva? Would you go for a Lever? Would you go for something like a Stump Jumper or an Enduro, which is a non-e-bike? Or would you go for the Levo SL, lower power, lower weight, more agility? Get involved in the comments down below. In the meantime, if you want to see the story about the development of the Lever, which started quite a long time ago, I'll leave that video stand by here. Give a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, I'm going to go and get some shade from these intense uh, conditions here in South Africa. Don't forget to hit on the globe for more electric mountain bike content. What do you reckon, goats?